I'd like this to kind of be very, very informal. If you have a question, just shout it out, or you know, I'll try to. Uh, it's, it's different, right? When we're doing a lot of our stuff, we don't think about what we're doing and having to vocalize it. So if I'm, if you catch me just like being quiet for a while, <laughs> getting absorbed in that, just snap me out of it with a question or something like that. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or <laughs> do something in this thing, so I'll feedback in my ear. Yeah. Um, how many of you paint in pastels or want to or? Okay. Okay. So a lot of you want to. Okay. So um, <clears throat> my approach is definitely, uh, <clears throat> I am not classically taught, so I'm kind of, the only reason this looks organized is because I had to transport all my pastels here. <laughs> Normally they're all over the desk and everything like that. So, um, <clears throat> so it's probably not traditional the way a lot of you know, people learn stuff, but it's the way I do it and it seems to work for me most of the time. I do have a lot of failures, right? We never publicize those. So the pieces that I'm, I've got a few of them that are tucked away in a drawer that it's like, never want to see the light of day. Yes. Is, is this a it is not a microphone. It just goes to that for recording it. Okay. If can everybody hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> Sorry. I hope it's not too loud in front. I, I, I teach, so I have to project a lot of times. I've been talking all day anyway, so excuse my voice. Yes. What do you teach? Uh, <laughs> I, I'm a retired clinical veterinarian, so I was in practice for 25 years, and so I developed some health issues, so I had to leave practice. So now I actually uh, teach veterinary technicians at Gateway Technical College in Elkhorn in Wisconsin. So I'm still involved with that, and I love teaching it. And so I like teaching, and it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, but for this semester, I'm teaching pharmacology and clinical pathology. So, so it keeps me, <laughs> keeps me busy. Yes, exactly. So that's another reason I haven't had quite as much time for shows. I've been actually uh, a little bit more class time than typical sometimes. Um, so anyway, it's, it's a lot of fun. And, but um, so anyway, I, the, I think kind of one of the neat things with pastels that hopefully you'll find out is that you can kind of work quick eventually, all right? It takes time, obviously, with anything. But um, it's correctable kind of nicely. I know oil paints are too, right? You can kind of, and I actually learned on oil paint paints first. My mom liked the oil paint, so I did that as a kid. Um, <clears throat> did that as a kid, but um, I discovered pastels in junior high, actually, <laughs> believe it or not. And I loved that you could, you know, kind of make quick colors and, and cover wide swaths of, of the paper with pigment. And so after that, I kind of never went back. So, um, so I've kind of done it since. And I was mentioning to a few of you beforehand, I recently tried some oils again and found it very frustrating because, you know, you have to wait for things to dry. And then you have to kind of go back to your palette all the time and put stuff on. Whereas for me, I just grab a different color, okay, and you can just start putting it on. So this is kind of what I'm going to try to paint here. I'll just show and then plug it in. Whoops, of course, picture goes out. Okay, there you go. Okay, so... Um, this is actually from, uh, my son lives in Arizona. So I, I, I take all my own reference photos. Again, being a, a vet, I love animals and that's essentially almost exclusively what I paint. And so this is a uh, sanderling from the Salt Lake River, um, which actually we just kind of went out. Um, can everybody kind of see for the most part, even in the back there? Okay. So the Salt River is actually really kind of beautiful. They have a herd of wild horses out there, but they also have a lot of birds and since it's in the middle of the desert um, the birds really love the, the river there and um, but the, the last visit there was quite intriguing I went to get some horse reference photos and uh, went with my wife and my daughter and we actually got chased out by a stallion <laughs> it's a little uh, nerve-wracking honestly he was kind of hidden and I walked was trying to walk behind a couple other uh, horses. These are relatively tame. You stay 50 yards away, you're fine usually. But I didn't see it. And all of a sudden, he stood up in the back, and then I heard rrr, rrr, kind of a deep guttural kind of thing. And I was like, oh, geez. So this wasn't bad until he started actually walking toward us. And then he slowly started going faster and faster. So we were walk, you know, not turning our back, just quickly walking backwards as best as we could. So, um, but anyway, so. Yeah, that was kind of an interesting, I, I could see the headlines when I was out there, you know, Illinois tourist gets trampled by a, by a Salt Lake stallion, a Salt River stallion here. Okay, so for equipment wise, I like using, I already transferred this and you can see it on there too, but I, <clears throat> I transferred this to a type of paper and a lot of the paper, since a lot of you haven't, um, again, how many of you wanted pastel but you never have before? 
Okay, so a fair amount of you. The paper is actually really important. The paper actually has a surface to it, okay? And the, the paper actually, um, what they call tooth. And it comes in all different types of, of tooth, the paper. Some of it is almost like sandpaper, literally. And I don't like that because, A, I blend a lot with my fingers and I like my fingertips and the sandpaper, you know, kind of scrapes away the tip of your fingers. So this paper is called Pastel Matte. It holds a lot of tooth. It's interesting. You, can ha it, you know, five, ten layers of pastel you can actually stack up on this thing. And during break, if you want, you know, take a feel of it along the edges. It feels almost like velour. It's kind of interesting. So, but it, it's a really kind of a neat, neat paper. Pastel Matte, it's called. Yeah, and it, it comes in only one weight, comes in a number of different sizes, um, as well as uh, colors. So I like kind of the neutrals to work on. Um, I don't use, a lot of pastels use like the background as part of their painting. Yeah, they let it kind of shine, you know, it, it kind of show through the actual, um, uh, let the paper show through on their image kind of. I, I don't, I usually cover kind of the whole thing. So um, anyway, so pastel matte is, is my choice. I really, really like it. Then <laughs> I actually, I think this is a small collection of pastels. Again, break, come on around and take a look at them. And if you want, you can pick them up, try them out along the edges here too. But um, I've seen some pastels, you know, with literally like thousands of them. A, they're too expensive, so I don't like to do that. And two, I like blending them anyway. So if I don't have, a, I don't search for the perfect color. I just go ahead and, you know, put it, put it on something close. Yeah. I, I prefer really, really soft. It's kind of like buttery, they always say, right? It's got a buttery texture. You make a line and it's just a nice smooth pigment line behind where you, uh, where you placed it. Um, others are more waxy. So like these I have, these are Rembrandts. I won most of these in, <laughs> in shows and I don't use them. So, um, but they're nice for teaching. So I can go ahead and use them in other sorts of things. But um, these are Rembrandts. These are kind of very firm. They don't, you know, they're not as, chalky you know and but they're also don't blend as well they're almost like the waxy kind of almost a waxy feel to them which it just isn't me um i know fran fran teaches fran has been a big inspiration of mine she when i kind of wanted to get a little more serious about pastels i took one of her classes at the north shore art league and you know that was um probably the competition but <laughs> But anyway, so I, I uh, and so, but it was really helpful and kind of got me introduced to a lot of these different ones. Fran, you're talking about Fran Vale. Fran Vale, who's our judge for our member show in May. Yes. Who he's talking about. Yep. So. Yeah. So she's a, a great pastelist. I think one of the best things she did. She's just a great teacher and instilled a lot of confidence, which is hard to come by as an artist, right? I mean, we all we're putting our souls on the line, right, with everything we create, and so it's. It's not an easy, <laughs> easy thing to do. I'm still not very thick-skinned. If I get rejected from a show, I get angry. But anyway, it's a different story. Uh, so I like using a brand called Unison, U-N-I-S-O-N. <clears throat> they are very, very, again, kind of soft and buttery. <laughs> and so again, you can kind of try uh, some of these out. Very, very nice feel. The second ones I like the most are Jack Richeson's. <clears throat> Richeson, R-I-C-H. E-S-O-N, yeah, Jack Richardson, and um, yeah, they both have really nice consistencies. The Rembrandts, some of the ones that are waxy, I'll use for highlights, because it tends to stick a little bit more, so I'll use either for really bright whites or really dark blacks, excuse me, um, I'll use a little bit some more of the waxy ones. So, uh, any questions on equipment or anything? Oh yeah, okay, got a couple, yes, go ahead. <laughs> That's a great question. Okay, framing. It's the whole, one of the downsides of pastels, right? It's not like you can go to Michael's and pick up a frame and just, you know, put your oil or acrylic in there. You have to get it framed under glass. And there's a lot of different ways to go ahead and, and do that. Um, I am not good at framing. I actually have the place in Libertyville do it. Um, back out, Curtis Gallery. They do my framing. Uh, they do a nice job. A very, very nice job. And um, generally, too, if you do a lot of things for shows, you need special glass. So regular glass actually doesn't, isn't sufficient because A, it's not UV protective. So your pastels can start to fade and everything under that. So you usually need um, protective, you know, UV glass, which leaves a non-reflective too, right? <laughs> so it gets kind of expensive, but it leaves a little bit of a, 
odd surface. So I actually like using something, unfortunately it's the most expensive too, but it's called museum glass. Museum glass is great. It actually almost like enhances colors. It would almost be like varnishing and oil painting. It seems to bring out a lot more of the colors, which is really nice. Um, but um, um, so yes, it does get mounted on a board. Sorry, I went off on a tangent. It does get mounted on a board and then framed under glass. I usually use spacers. I don't use a mat. I used to, and kind of uh, society changes and taste changes, and most people are now want to make it more look like an oil. So um, not that it's totally frowned upon, but it's something that generally mo most pastelists tend not to use a mat as much anymore. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Good. Yes. Uh, oh. <laughs> Follow up, yes. If this turned out fantastic, wouldn't you want it mounted on a board already? Because it's hard to mount it once it's done. Actually not. So the key is storage. It's a great point. So when you're done, what do you do with it, right? So for myself, I uh, have the archival clear plastic bags. Now there's kind of controversy with that because plastic has static, right? So the static can lift some of the pigment off. I, it's not a problem for me because I tend to work very thin. There are some pastels who work very, very thick and they get a lot of dust. And putting that painting in a sleeve like that is not probably going to work very well. So they lay glassine paper on it and then just store it flat in a cabinet until it's ready to be framed. And then, so I don't frame anything until it gets accepted into a show. So, so. Is, it's a pastel, so how do you then mount it on a board without messing it up? Oh, usually just on the back, they have double sided adhesives. Uh, adhesive tape, and things like that. So it'll get mounted on um, um, archival um, backing board, foam board, or something like that. There are some pastels, papers, and I've actually tried one of them, and it's not bad. I can't remember the name of it though now, but it is. Um, it's attached to a foam core board already, so it's very rigid, which is nice. You don't have to worry about paper crinkling or anything like that. Um, and then they just mount that board when they're actually framing it. So, yeah, that's a great question. I hadn't honestly given <laughs> much thought to it. Yes, Sue, yeah, I don't know. I have a good class. I have a good catalog. Like, like, like you yep. Have a category of pamphlets. What you call pastel boils. Put out by Emerson. Yes. I haven't. I have heard good things about it. And like a lot of the groups I follow, a lot of people like it. A lot of people like a, a brand called UART, mm -hmm. and I don't really like UART. It's too rough for me, and they have different grades, but it, honestly, it looks like sandpaper. You go to Home Depot and buy 800 grit sandpaper, it's the same thing, right? And they just slap their name on the back of it. But it tends to curl a lot, which is a real problem, too. And then you have to really, you know, when you're working on it, mount it to something that's like a foam board or something like that that would give you some degree of backing and um, rigidity to the back of it. But yeah, I have heard good things about that. So yes, um, I think the I haven't tried the actual ampersand board, but I think that was the one I was talking about. Kind of comes with like a white border on it, if I'm right. Yeah, and that one's actually pretty nice. It's it's very kind of similar to this, a little slightly rougher, but not bad. What kind of finish? What type of finish do you use uh, when you're done? That's another great question. Fixative. <laughs> okay. So fixative. A lot of times, the dust is on you, right? You got to have a framer who makes sure they know you're working in pastels. Because if they don't and they touch the paper, they'll ruin the image, right? The, it's not fixed. I don't fix, and not many pastels do, actually, which is interesting. Most fixatives actually utterly destroy the color, which is really interesting. It's like a s small liquid. Some people claim to do it well. I've yet to see someone who's done it does, does it nicely. Um, there are some brands that are supposed to be non-yellowing um, and non-darkening. But um, when I was kind of experimenting with some different pastels and stuff like that when I was younger and then trying the actual like fixative that you can buy at the store, utterly ruined the whole piece, which is interesting. Some people uh, swear by like a hairspray that some has got their own, you know, things like that, that this hairspray, they go very lightly over their base layer and then they add to that. Um, I think, again, it's probably a matter of personal preference and how rough and how uh, much pastel you actually put on the paper. If you go pretty light, even the framer has told me, she goes, wow, you really have like no dust at all compared to most other pastels she gets. So, yes. You do? Okay. You tell us about it, because yeah, I'm kind of curious too. Well, that's the problem is, is that the certain papers will change the color more than others. But I always use it and then re go 
over it because okay. I use it to kind of stabilize it. Yeah. yeah. I've never had a problem with it, Jason, yeah. like after I finish. Now, okay. if I finish it, then I don't put it Yeah, in. yeah. I'll yeah. That's the most common thing I've yeah. seen too with people using it is to kind of settle a layer down so it, you know kind of give it more uh, bite another surface yeah exactly put some more tooth on it uh, you can erase pastels you can take like a paintbrush and kind of a stiff bristled brush and you will create dust so if you're sensitive to the dust wear a mask okay some people wear gloves they want to wear you know to you know to prevent from getting dirty to me it's part of the fun so I don't know uh, um, I've always liked sculpture and for me maybe this is my thing of sculpture of working with my hands kind of trying to do something like that but um, so yeah you can erase and any other questions yes I was just gonna say let's get into this here too okay so for myself too I don't try to blend like perfect colors with this all the time so I as you saw I divided this into basically nine the rule of thirds I got nine separate uh, grid areas I'll actually work upper left and then go across and then just complete each row why because it smudges so I don't want to be I know some pastels who have very good patience they can they do the subject and then do everything around them and then they use you know uh, glassine paper on there so they don't smudge but No, <laughs> it's a good question. Yeah, uh, we are talking. Some of this is uh, I've done both, and actually the last two I've done have been on an easel, and I haven't worked on an easel in a while, and I actually kind of like it a lot because also the pastel kind of falls away, right? So you don't have it just kind of building up on your paper, and then you got to take it off. You don't want to blow, right? Because then you're creating dust, but just kind of gently tap it. Um, and depending, some people will have like a little moist paper towel or something they'll have that they just might, you know, tap it into so that the pigment doesn't dust, you know, it gets trapped by kind of the, um, the wet paper towel. But um, so generally here too, I get kind of a, um, a couple colors that I think, you know, are close to what I want. And so I'm just going to go with the blue here. And so... I'll just go ahead and kind of start blocking in a lot of the color and then I'll add generally on top of it and so I'll kind of go ahead and just kind of mix it around it's kind of nice <clears throat> and this is pretty much the whole thing so I'll just kind of try to do it kind of quickly um, bigger paintings do eat up a lot of pastel <laughs> okay so it can get kind of pricey um, if you work a lot of very big pieces, but again because of pastels and you have to frame them a lot of the times people Don't work really big because it gets expensive to frame and then ship so especially if you do a lot of shows and a lot of contests and I I've always been a very competitive person. I used to play a lot of sports. So for myself. I I tend to try to do a lot of shows <laughs> or a lot of um, art art shows and art contests kind of type things, but Okay. What's your favorite size to do that? Uh, I, 11 by 14, you know, probably is a nice one. It's big enough. It allows me to get the detail. I'm, I like a lot of detail. Animals are, are fantastically detailed. And so um, <clears throat> the neat thing about that is they, um, I often kind of discover neat things, you know, about them um, just by uh, doing um, you know, by looking at a lot of the details. So being very detail oriented, 16 by 20, sometimes you get too big and you, then you get bogged down too much in some of the detail. Um, but um, otherwise, um, it's, it's kind of a little bit more, um, see, it's, I'm finding I'm having a hard time trying to work and <laughs> talk at the same time. Oh. Yes, it actually does. So I actually have, and I think it's an important thing to have, have like a wet wipes or something there and then paper towels just to dry. Yep, baby wipes, yep. What's the color you're putting on there This is like a, um, I don't know, kind of like an ochre, uh, red, brown. I'm very bad at my colors, honestly, too. I couldn't give you specific things. Again, it's not that I'm classically trained. I often look at a color and say, that brown looks pretty close. So I'll go ahead and do that. Um, so I'm kind of putting on most of the, where I see kind of a lot of the um, red and the brown. I don't have my grid up on my reference. 
um, which I'll sometimes use, sometimes don't, but I can usually kind of judge it. I like to um, freehand my actual um, image just using the the uh, the three by three, uh, you know, the or the nine squares on there, and I think it's kind of nice because then it um, <clears throat> it basically um, uh, keeps my drawing skills sharp. Okay, so I don't want to always just make it a grid and then just draw a shape in each one. Though, you know, again, you do end up drawing, you know, shapes a lot of times. Okay, so I put the, the red on. Now I'm going to go with kind of like a, um, kind of like a bluish purple, a deeper kind of sky blue. And then I'll grab a much darker blue here in a second. And I'll often test my color kind of as what I'm looking at, if it's what I want or not. Um, Okay, so that's a little closer. And then, so from here, a lot of the, a lot of the thing is observation, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just blow up my image a little bit more on my screen here so I can see a little bit more of the detail. Um, <clears throat> so, I, I cut just, you know, I'm sure all you know too, this is basically like, you know, 98% of the game is just observation. Right, what am I actually looking at? And then it's trying to draw the actual shapes that you see there. Um, the more you kind of blow it up, the more colors you kind of actually can, um, the more colors you can actually kind of tend to, to see. There's a lot of kind of little ones that will show up. Is that the water? Yes, so I'm just at the upper left portion I'm working on. Um, and so, yes, this is all just the water. Um, and then the one important thing is to try to not get lost, which <laughs> sometimes happens. Do you have a grid on the photo that you're working with? I, I sometimes do. I don't have one on here right now, but yeah. Actually, this is a little bit darker blue in through here. So, actually, I think this... This darker. And so I, I'll mix brands. To me, it doesn't matter. They t all tend to kind of to mix pretty well. Um, and so for my cell, I don't know if you can see this, but the kind of the where the bend in the bird's legs is is pretty much about where the bottom of the first triangle is, essentially. The nice thing I think about pastels is that you can get really cool, um, really neat edges, and you can make things look really soft, so it's great for distance, and for especially for animals, for like um, feathers or a fur, it's really, really, um, I think, one of the best things. I tried again with those oil paints to try to get a little bit of, um, kind of a little bit of like fur. <laughs> To try and yeah, it wasn't working very well. I was getting very frustrated. What's your favorite thing to paint? Probably horses. I love horses to paint, and to me, they're just really, really, really cool. Um, the um, I, I actually too, as some of you have seen, I have the insanity to sometimes try to paint reptiles, um, which is. Yeah, uh, from photos, but yeah, yeah. Well, I have a snake and a veiled chameleon, so my daughter, of course, and she was younger, wanted one, and so I was like, okay, I'm a vet, I know how to take care of it. So, so, all right, but now she's off in college, so who's taking care of it? Of course, me. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> I don't know, 40, 50 hours probably. Yeah. That was, again, that one was uh, questioning myself of why did I even start that thing. Um, okay, so just kind of drawing in most of the colors here, trying to see where I'm, where I'm at. There's a few little, um, you know, shreds of color here and there. Yeah, yeah, it's a great question. Um, 
Yeah, I think one of the things I don't want to do always is be a slave to my reference photo. You can tell, you know, you can tell when, when, at least I can too, I don't know, but sometimes in some of the animal art, you can tell that this person just copied a photo. Um, I, what I usually try to do is get as close as I can, I think, to like what I'm happy with with the reference photo, and then at that point, um, I'll usually step back, step away, let it sit for a day or two, and then I don't even work on my, I don't put out my reference photo anymore. So I just actually work on it, turning it into a, making sure it looks like a painting at the end of it, and that I'm careful with all my edges, because a lot of times photos lie, you know, you get too crisp of edges here, that sort of stuff, and so it's nicer to kind of just sit back again and turn it into a painting at the end. Um, yeah, too much, it, Detail is um, a double-edged sword. It really is. You can kind of get so lost in it sometimes um, to where it's detail for the sake of detail's sake. And then at that point, it kind of loses any sort of significance. Um, now, <laughs> you're probably saying, wait, what, you did that with that snake. <laughs> but to me, again, it's all, it's all part of actually the... Um, the actual animal itself, and so some of that detail actually is is what defines kind of that animal. I guess is that and I don't know if you can follow that or not. So you got to be true to that in my mind. But um, but I I've I know of a couple. There's this artist and he's so photorealistic that to a point you're almost like okay. You're like, I could just look at a photo of this, you know, how is it any different? And I think that's the interesting thing is, uh, you know, I want to, I don't want it to be a photo. <laughs> I want it to be a painting. And so at that point, trying to, um, you know, um, turn it into something that is um, a work of art rather than just a copy of a photo. So, all righty. So now this is kind of where I'll usually go ahead and start blending and I'll just blend this and I'll start on the bird just time wise to make sure we can do some stuff here too so <laughs> this is very unscientific <laughs> I'll kind of go ahead and um, go through this and kind of just try to see if I can get some basic kind of shapes at the end I'll probably come back with a little bit more actual definition and here I see you know some places that there should be a little bit more color and kind of go from there and so you do have to watch because the pigment obviously will get on your your fingers and so um, you can smudge it kind of like that <laughs> but that's okay so you can just kind of go over it if you want and you'll find yourself often using at least I do different <laughs> different fingers so you got you got five so you, yeah, I, I look at them a lot of times it's like okay this one doesn't have any brown so I can use that one still no, I haven't gotten down to toes yet, but it's a good idea. <laughs> wow, it's kind of neat. Yeah. Yeah, dang. Yeah, I'm kind of jealous of that because, yeah, no, I don't have that kind of skill just yet. But... Yeah, usually... Um, which is kind of, I, it's interesting to me, when I get to that stage for myself, it's like I'm, um, I'm painting shapes, okay, so I, it doesn't matter. Honestly, when I get to this, I know sometimes it's like, oh, it's the main subject, I got to do that. To me, it's honestly, I, I'm looking at each different pattern as just a different shape. So are you doing it to like, so you don't smudge it? Is that why you're doing Correct. It? From left to right, yeah. And up to down, Exactly. Yeah, I don't like working with like the glassine paper and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's it's interesting. <laughs> um, it's more you know kind of out of practicality than kind of anything, but um, okay. <laughs> I remember those. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, yeah, I know what she's talking about. Yeah. They're, they're all, they're, the, the, the 
the 100 squares in the correct order. And so you take a pic that little bit and you transfer it, you know, draw it into the square that it belongs. And eventually you have a picture that you had no idea what it was. Yeah, I remember those. How do you manage to keep the heel of your hand off the paper? Uh, that's a good question. Yep, exactly. Um, it's one of the nice things of trying to work in that order so I don't have to do that. But yes, in a bigger piece, it is something you have to be aware of. And I find sometimes I'm like, oh, and I look back and I smudged it. So I'm hoping that actually by switching a little bit more to an easel, that problem gets avoided a little bit rather than actually leaning on the actual painting. Right, the easel would be easier. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, is that the thing that you put? Yeah. I wonder what it was called. I don't know. <laughs> I do, yeah. At home I have a drawing table. Um, it's, if I'm working from the easel, the drawing table is where my pastels are and my computer are. Um, and if I'm using a smaller piece and I'm just doing that, like an 8x10 or something, that'll be on the table. Yep. And I tilt it a little bit. Um, I um, I don't tape it a lot of times. Sometimes people will tape it to the actual table because I do take a lot of trips from there to the bathroom downstairs, not for what you think, but to look in the mirror, <laughs> right? Okay, and then make sure everything's coming along okay by checking the, the painting in the mirror, making sure I have everything. The, the mirror trick is amazing. It uncovers so many problems. It's incredible. I've had things where I'm working, I'm like, man, I'm nailing this. And I go and look at it in the mirror, and I'm like, that's all wrong. You know? It's crazy. So, yeah, the mirror trick for some of you who don't know, take your painting and actually go to the mirror and put it in the painting, and you're looking at it in reverse. Because our brain gets so trained at seeing it in one plain and one view all the time. When you see it in a different view, all, automatically you know what you identify uh, problems with it. And I think it's expe especially important with, it, with things that require symmetry. Um, you know, it really helps a lot. Good, good point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> well, the problem is, is downstairs the fan, um, the light on the fan is so uh, noisy. <laughs> so I turn it on, it's like, and my wife hears it upstairs, and she's like, what are you doing? Now? It's like, sorry, I'm looking at the painting in the mirror. So I'm going to go back through a lot of this and add more of the blue. You can see there's more, uh, probably some of the color that I'm having in there is a little bit harsh. So I'm going to go back and kind of um, tame it down a little bit with some more of the blue. Um, add in, there's a little bit of red that probably should go right in around here. Um, yeah, that's kind of what it's like. It's kind of what it's like. It's fun. <laughs> so again, this will be, it looks kind of dirty when you're going through it, and then it'll get cleaned up a little bit. Um, but I want to get just the basic, um, the basic uh, colors on there. I actually have them probably a little too harsh, so I'll, like I said, come back and kind of tame those down a fair amount. And it's easy to kind of just tame them down. I'm going to take kind of like the blue and then just kind of um, go in there, pay a little bit more attention to the actual patterns that I'm seeing. Yeah, it is. It's yeah, it is. It's basically just true pigment. It's just a binder is usually you know like cellulose or some sort of mild kind of binder to it. Whereas in oil paintings, right, the binder is the actual oil. Um, probably a little bit more. Just a little touch of blue, kind of up through here too. And then let me know when you want to, when we take a break, then I'll start working on the, um, the actual bird and then kind of show, show you how I do the detail with the pastel pencils. So. Sounds good. Can you use a kneaded eraser as you do with charcoal? That's a great question. Uh, 
you can slightly, it just doesn't work very well, at least in my hands. Um, you can kind of try to, to press and peel it off. Uh, we got a paint, paintbrush sometimes works pretty good, a stiff bristle, you know, a paintbrush, you know, and you just kind of flake it off a little bit and then you can get back, you know, to a, st knocking all that stuff off the paper so it get, exposes that tooth again so you can reapply the pigment. Okay, so this needs a lot more, less red and kind of a little bit more blue, but. Uh, You're not using a pastel stick, one of those paper cardboard things that look like that. Oh, yeah. Um, I have in the past. They're not actually too bad uh, to use for blending. Uh, for me, it's just kind of a little bit more tedious. I can kind of get it done quicker with my fingers. and <laughs> Fingers are my best tool, right? <laughs> Until I learn my toes, yes. That would be, I could make a mint, right? The pastel painter paints with his toes. That would be pretty awesome. <laughs> So you can kind of cover it up a little bit. Um, I've got way too much red in here. I'll, you know, I'm going to go ahead and kind of get that taken care of over time. And, but this generally is an area where I, you were talking before about, you know, taking a little artistic license. I, usually water reflections, I'm not overly, you know, um, concerned with every single thing, making sure I get it right. I just want to get the idea of water so that the person kind of viewing it knows, is pretty confident actually in what it is and that it's rendered somewhat somewhat uh, faithfully. But again, does every little, you know, um, every little, you know, ripple in there need to be perfect? No. So, Actually, it's kind of weird. My eye just caught now like a um, some interesting shapes of like the lighter blue. So I'm kind of going through there, and, and actually, it's kind of like more of these little um, circular kind of areas that are kind of showing up in there. Maybe you caught them earlier. <laughs> um, so. going to add a little bit more. A lot of times you don't need to go heavy on it. That little tiny bit I just added in there um, actually will probably be more than sufficient for uh, kind of spreading out the pigment pretty well. And then um, I think what I'm going to do lastly here is try to go even a slightly bit lighter. Um, and actually kind of highlight like areas that I'm seeing where kind of there is a little bit of almost like a slight lighter um, area to the to the blue. It might be hard to appreciate on the camera, um, but there are some areas where it's a little bit more. Um, you can see as I'm rubbing it, actually a lot of the pigment somewhat comes off that you put in. Um, you can kind of squish that down a little bit more uh, if you wanted to. Um, but once you tap it, that'll actually all fall off. Gonna get that kind of taken care of. It's a little bit too much over there. In this example, the blue wavelets are clearly reflecting the sky, but what about the brown wavelets? Is that showing you what's under the um, that's a great question. This is a river, okay? So it's actually, it's gonna, there's going to be movement in through there. So it's going to be reflecting a lot less of, you know, true of what's on the bank. So on the bank here, there were a bunch of trees <laughs> um, and um, kind of some mountains in the back, but it's mostly going to be sky and some of the, um, this was actually a little bit closer to the shore. So most of these colors are probably reflective more of the actual, um, the bank and the, yeah, exactly, yep.
Okay, so yeah. Oh. <laughs> so let me go ahead and then I'll um, I'm gonna just blend this a little tiny bit here and then alrighty. So I'm gonna stop here and just kind of blend a little bit more. Pardon? What happened? Oh, uh, <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> Oh, you guys are harsh. So sometimes to give it a little bit of a softer edge too, you kind of just like swirl it a little bit. It's kind of nice and then it just kind of um, fades into some of the surrounding type of thing. You'll see them, I'm just kind of wiping my pinky here a little bit. Isn't that fun? <laughs> yeah. Pardon? No, that was actually mostly pastel pencil. So a lot of times the backgrounds I'll actually do with the you know the big sticks and then the uh, detail yeah will be pastel pencil, but then they just generally don't have good color saturation for like really good highlights or or deep darks. So then I'll go back with sticks, break them into really tiny pieces, and try to tap as much as I can and get those colors um, you know as quickly as I can. So I am ready for a break. I'll just finish this while you guys. Really quick go, and then I'll go ahead, and then I'll, I'll. Uh, I know I have to do the stuff too, but I'll just. Uh, Sign up. Hospitality. Right time. Break time. Ah, it's heavy-handed with the red, so I'm gonna, <laughs> gonna have to kind of take that back. But that's kind of what I'm. Working on. Yeah, um, usually not, believe it or not. Um, some. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, I know that is. It's really saturated on there from what it is, but. Um, <laughs> no, you can see I, I kind of I need to get rid of a lot of the reds on there, but yeah, you're asking about. It doesn't really matter a lot of times which color you kind of add. You can often add in whites. The, the brights on top of the darks, but the, I don't like doing that because as soon as you do that, you're dulling the white. So I kind of will save the whites for the absolute, you know, um, um, brightest highlight that I need to have. Like for an eye reflection or something, I'll just use that. And then, um, oh, pastel matte, it's called. I do. I remember these as I was running out of the door. <laughs> oh. Thank you. No. Um, try to like, you know, fence myself in on some of this. So, this is correct. These are pastel pencils. If you've never used them before, they're actually really kind of interesting. They um, they are like colored pencils, except they blend a little bit more. So I'm just going to leave that kind of colored in a little lightly. Um, I use a lot of actual kind of like a tan instead of white because white again for me the really really this is kind of like a I guess not tan what is it, like an off-white oh I used to whittle a lot as a kid so I was like, I'm okay with this <laughs> and I used to do surgery too so I'm like <laughs> I'm used to this not that I did this on my patients that would have been kind of bad <laughs> Yeah, they'd be under anesthesia. So. No. <laughs> I'll have to, yeah. So I'm kind of just outlining the head here. Let me get to the some of the basic colors. So there's kind of like a... Uh, I used a pastel pencil. Yep, I just used the light blue. Kind of fades away a little bit more. I'm trying to go... A little bit above the eye and then kind of back. Pardon? Yes. Actually, I like the general's um, white. Um, it's very bright and white and firm. So um, it's kind of a nice one to kind of go ahead and, and actually have. So 
I'll just basically kind of color it in. I don't usually blend much when I'm working. Yeah, with the pencils, not usually much. So that's kind of the baseline color, and then I'll kind of darken it up a little bit in the middle where that little ridge is around the top. Um, and then there's kind of a little one that kind of comes off to the back here. Alrighty, so now I'll take, um, let's see, to me, again, I'll use a little bit of gray, light gray here instead of, again, white. Again, white I like to save again for the, um, for more of the highlights on everything. Though you can blend it pretty nicely. You can add, honestly, to like any color, just add a little bit of white to it when you're drawing it or in the background like that, and it'll kind of get it um, a little bit of a nicer nicer kind of color. There's a, so I'm just going to kind of go a little bit off to the side. You can see the gray almost comes up as like a white anyway. Um, Are you going to do the whole bird in the pencils or do you black in the colors? Of the um, no, I'll probably do 85-90% of the bird in pencils. For the big area on the bottom where it's kind of white, I might use, that's again going to be a real white area, so I'll probably go ahead and use the, um, the pastel sticks for that. Is that a specific brand of pencil? Yeah, good question. They're called Carb Othello uh, pastel pencils. I kind of like them. They just seem to be like a little bit, um, a little bit um, firmer than some of the other ones, and... Um, I, I think they blend really well, which is kind of a hard thing to to get with the pencils. Um, okay, so okay, so there's just a little, very little, tiny hint of like the opposite part of the eye and the head right here. So I'm just going to leave that really kind of light there, um, and there's going to be a little bit of highlight on there. In fact, talking about the general, here's my little bit of general. I like it so much, I'll save it till it's about an inch long. <laughs> so there'll be a little bit of a highlight there, and then the side of the head will come around like that. A little bit of a wider one like that. And then I see right above the eye again, yeah, there was, like I was mentioning, there's just a little tiny bit of blue. So tame that down again with a little bit of the white here. Um, the eye, again, I'm going to use dark brown for now, but then come back. It's a very, very dark black, so that should hopefully... Um, and you're looking at it again for an angle, so it's not going to be totally... It's going to be more like uh, angular, oval shape than actually just like round. Yes, so I would probably the really, really darkest part that I want to have the most focus on, I'll probably take like a, a little tiny piece of black and just make that eye really, really dark and probably the beak on the underside a little bit too. Oh, yes. Yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, you yeah, it, it's, it's not perfect, and I'll go back actually then and just redo the edges. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, I probably would go a little bit further with, um, with the background at this stage. Um, uh, you know, and then kind of draw, leave that. I usually go a little bit into the subject and then I go over it to get a nice fine edge with the actual pencils. Oh, okay. Does that help? So I'm gonna go a little bit darker now just so that it's there and that we You don't have to press really hard, honestly. It kind of just comes off on its own <laughs> a little bit. Um, so there's a really dark area where there's going to be... For myself, it's been, uh, you know, painting animals, it's a godsend um, having done what I've done for all the years because <laughs> the anatomy it really kind of helps come easier to me. Um, <clears throat> so it's kind of cheating, <laughs> I guess, to some degree. Um, yeah, true. Yep, exactly. So, um, 
so for me, the, um, yeah, I don't know. Does anybody else get this? I've kind of asked at different times to different um, people. And when you're painting, do you actually kind of like um, feel what you're painting? Feel what you're painting. Like when I was painting that snake, I'd actually like feel the scales when I was yeah. doing them, and in the feathers, I'll yeah. feel like the feathers. It's really kind of weird. I don't know. I thought it was just me and some weird <laughs> kind of thing. But. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I got that. I'll just kind of... Put a little bit in through there. I'll darken that. It's a little bit darker. I don't use a lot of blacks until the very end, like I said, and then, whoops. <clears throat> but I'll kind of get this a little darker. And for me, again, I'm not actually thinking, oh, I'm painting an eye, okay? What I'm doing is actually just I'm painting the shape that I'm seeing, and then I'm hoping at the end of it, I trust in the process that it'll actually um, look <laughs> like what I, what I want it to. <clears throat> Okay, so the bottom of the beak kind of comes out like this, and then it's kind of very light. It is very dependent to pastels on the, you can, if you press really hard, it's like kind of anything, you'll get it very light if you kind of um, press really hard, it gets really dark. If you um, press really soft, it will, um, it'll come up kind of soft, so. Okay, so for now I'm going to kind of darken and give a little bit more structure to the to the beak here. Kind of take some of the, you do a lot of switching. It's no different than like if you were, you know, actually like oil painting where you have to go back to the, your palette all the time and. Okay, so now I'm going to go back where it's really white. Let's add kind of the. The uh, highlights, the really white areas here, and then so I'm uh, I'm epileptic. So the medicine I'm on, that's why I had to leave practice actually. But the medicine that I'm on sometimes gives me a little bit of a hand tremor. So it's um, better some days than others, but most of the time it's pretty manageable. Um, that's what kind of helps a little bit when, um, whoops, okay, so let's go a little bit further back through here, and then, <sighs> good question, I, I've kind of had both. Um, it depends a little bit, I think, on kind of like stress. <laughs> if I'm a little bit more stressed or anything like that, it typically seems to be a little bit, uh, get a little worse. But, um, oh yeah, most of the time it actually really helps. If I'm having, <laughs> it gets worse, I guess, when I'm getting frustrated with the painting, but most of the time it's very relaxing. And yeah, I put on my music and, you know, it's usually too late when I get a chance to paint, so I don't drink coffee, but I put on a coffee-scented candle. <laughs> so I get, the, I get the smell of the coffee without the caffeine, so that's kind of nice. Yeah, remember that, right? Um, so, um, so anyway... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, big time, yep. I some I have to sometimes watch, and I don't know if you're like this too, but once I, you get going, right, you get really enthralled in it, you're, you're, you're in the zone for a long time, and then you're like, oh, man, i got to get up to go to work, <laughs> you know? And then, um, yeah, yeah, you're up till 1 or 2 in the morning, and then it's really kind of a little bit, um, <laughs> a little bit problematic, but, okay, so let's get the, the, part on the underside of the eye. 
So I'll sometimes take like the actual white a little bit. I see that actually my, I gotta probably raise my back a little bit more on this, uh, the bird, but not much, but okay. And then, so let's do the rest of the, Yeah, <laughs> um, usually more like um, 10 to 15 probably hours, usually like an hour or two a night for like three to four weeks. So on average, I might complete about 10 to 12 paintings a year. I wish it was more, but you know, um, it is what it is for right now. When I retire, it'll be, <laughs> it'll be my uh, retirement gig here. And, So I'm just kind of, again, getting basic shapes that I'm drawing. So that area right, right where I'm at, you know, you can see the, I'm drawing like the, the shapes. I'm going to get the, the little darker there because it's a really dark brown. So I don't have to get the, just layering the black on top of the brown gives a nice, um, you know, a nice kind of dark brown without having to, to actually... Um, use the dark brown. It gives you more uh, gradations and shade too. Um, I'm going to kind of go up a little bit like this and then just kind of gently go around. That gives me my baseline color there. There's a little bit of blue right under the, the beak here. You know, the reflections are so interesting because, right, if you study reflections, they're the colors, there's such weird colors that you wouldn't expect in reflections. So think of that light's going to hit the water, it's going to rebounce, there's going to be blue on the underside of the animal. From, from the rock on the bottom, there's going to be, should be kind of a little bit of green, and there might be a little bit at the very, very bottom, but kind of more like a gray, kind of purpley thing. Purples are always really right, good shadow colors, uh, generally. All righty, so from here, I think I'm going to take, just do a little bit of my, my shading, basically trying to get again the shape of the head and the beak. It's all kind of, um, uh, let's go a little bit of along the back. And birds have actually like a ring of bones around their eyes, so they should have really like well defined, defined. Um, eyes. I don't know about a lot of you, but usually I'll like, <laughs> sometimes I get lost in the detail and I have to pick a landmark. So it's like, okay, I'm picking this shadow, particular shadow, or this particular shape so I don't get totally lost. I kind of didn't realize how hard it is to paint and talk at the same time. <laughs> you know. Some of the youth, while they're painting, they'll have music playing. Yeah. And then they voice over. Yep. Later. later. Yeah, that's actually probably a. Yep. Yeah, I see why not, too. Okay, so I think for here. I'm just going to darken this up a little bit more, give more definition to the face, and trying to think 3D on, you know, what is it, what exactly is happening with this with this bird? Why is his, you know, the head shape and everything like that? Okay, so I think I'm going to leave that now. Let's hit some nice, bright whites. The light's going to be coming from here, right? So let's go ahead and kind of try to define the, the, um, the, the breast on the bird. I think this is actually a bird called a sanderling. Any good birders out here? <laughs> sanderling. And the only reason I think so is because I painted one before. <laughs> and it looks really, really, really similar. So. Okay, so that'll be kind of our head. 
Um, let's take the rest of kind of the collar around here and it's kind of a little bit darker so I'll use the dark brown. What kind of music does everybody like listening to when they're painting? Rock and roll. Rock and roll. Really? <laughs> what? That's what I do. I do most of the time classical. Okay. Jazz is a good one. Something a little more calming. <laughs> Bluegrass, right? <laughs> that banjo going in your head 24-7, that would be kind of a little bit more difficult. Um, okay. So, so we got a really bright edge and kind of up through around through here and then it kind of tapers a little bit and I'm gonna at this point kind of use a little bit of like a uh, cream color so I'm gonna take sounds good yep yeah, time does fly, unfortunately, when you're having fun. So um, for this, actually, area, I'm going to probably use a little bit more. I have it kind of uh, roughed out here that this is all going to be kind of white. So I'm just going to kind of lightly go in here. I don't want to. I'm going to have to add those browns on top of it. But, um, but, but at least it's under there. And then I'll just slowly add a little bit of some of those browns to get the proper uh, streaking of those feathers. And then, and here I thought I'd be able to get pretty far with this. <laughs> um, the other thing that just kind of up through the top, um, again, it kind of helps to do a little bit of reference kind of type things, um, is kind of just to, for me to block in again kind of some of the dark so that I have some kind of landmarks on where to go. So for this, this pretty much goes... I'm just drawing the shape here that I see of the back part of that dark part of the wing. Then there's this little piece that comes down, and it goes down and across again. And you basically, again, have kind of like this type of a shape. Um, and then from there, then you have another piece that kind of goes down like that. Then you have the one feather here as a square needs to be a little bit smaller but <laughs> and then two kind of little ones here and that should take me. one of the best feelings I ever have is when I'm drawing something and I block in these colors and I end up where I'm supposed to because <laughs> it happens a lot of times I don't and I'm like ah oh, something's off what did I miss so that's when I go to the bathroom <laughs> and get, get the mirror all set yep yeah I know sorry TMI yep okay so that's pretty much, you know, and then this will kind of come along through the back a little bit more. And, um, it's quite difficult to use uh, the combination of the uh, pencils and... Yeah, yeah, for me. I, it's, it's probably depends on the subject. If it's like a quick, like a detailed portrait or something, it might be 85% pencils. And, and But sometimes, too, or something like this, it'll probably be only 30% pencils and, you know, 70% the actual... Things. Normally, I would do the background and then the bird, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I would normally do that. I think in the interest of time, it's more fun to do. <laughs> yeah, at least some of it here too. So I'll keep you posted. And like you said, I'll send it when I'm when I'm finished with it. Yep, I'll we'll be happy to send a picture with it. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that'd be a good idea. Yep. Yeah, I, I will. Thank you. Yes, I'll have to get into get it into a show because then I frame it because I don't usually frame them all because I wait until it's so expensive. So I wait until they're all done and then if, so if it gets accepted, then I'll frame it somewhere. So. All right. Thank you very much. It was absolutely my pleasure. I had a lot of fun. Was, thank you. Thank you, actually, too. That was all really, really good questions. A lot of the problems or things with pastels is just kind of the process, honestly, too. It, there's, it's kind of unique. A lot of people aren't familiar with it as much. And there's a lot of background behind it, you know, the framing and all this other stuff and trying not to smudge it or ruin it. <laughs> so. Thank you.